Getting right into today's video, I have my practice hand pre-prepped and I did apply the Not Polish Universal Tips. I'm going to be doing a pretty long set as usual and I'm just cutting off any excess tip to the length that I want them to be. Once I'm done trimming off any excess tip, I am taking my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick File and just filing the sides making sure that the shape is nice and straight. Now before we get into our application, I did want to show you guys how I pre-mixed my olive green color. This is my interpretation of olive green. I tend to see obviously green and then it has a yellow tint to it with a little bit of brown to mute it a little bit. So that's basically what I'm doing. If you want to mimic this exact color, use the number of scoops that I used for this container but i honestly like to eyeball it and if i need a little bit more green or a little bit more brown in there i do that as i go so i went ahead and thoroughly mixed this i just basically scratch at the bottom of the container and make sure i'm getting all the creases down right so for the application i'm going to be applying some clear on the pinky and then I'm going to be encapsulating this stunning freaking glitter from Kiara Sky. It is from their Loose Glitter. I am obsessed with it. It's so pretty. I believe the name is called Beetlejuice. And it has like a dark green, gold, bronzy tint to it. Um, you know, whenever you move it around in the light, it is so pretty. So I'm basically going to be just encapsulating that onto the full nail. And I like to work in sections, so I place down a little bit of clear and then put some glitter on it and then work my way up into the cuticle area. You can absolutely pre-mix this glitter with clear. I know for a lot of people, you guys are kind of confused as to why I choose to encapsulate. Me personally, I like to keep my loose glitters loose because if I do want to custom mix a glitter, it makes it easier and it ensures that you can cover all the surface of the nail that you want to cover. Sometimes you might add a little bit too much clear to it. And because I'm adding that base down on the nail, it's going to ensure that I can layer it on as much as I want. And it also ensures that it's going to adhere properly to that nail. If you do too much glitter to a small portion of clear acrylic, it might not adhere properly to the nail and it will cause the nail to lift very quickly. So that's why I choose to encapsulate instead. So now I'm going to be using that olive green color that I mixed and applying that on the tip of my ring finger. As you can see, some of that color does separate. I've never experienced it, especially with nut polish, but it doesn't bother me because I know how to blend it out. So as you can see, the marbling as you would call it disappears as soon as you start molding that acrylic and placing it where you want to place it so definitely a lot easier to work with the not polish acrylics versus you know more opaque acrylics so definitely recommend it So I'm going in with my nude and this is a first nude from Not Polish and I'm just going to be creating an ombre for that ring finger. I decided to leave this one pretty simple and then I'm going to be using all the other nails as accents. 
So I'm just taking a medium sized bead of acrylic for my ombre. I like to work in sections and I like to work with smaller beads just to ensure that I don't put way too much product and that I get the ombre down right. And I'm going ahead and taking that same nude and applying that on the middle finger. This is going to be a full nude nail. I'm also going to be doing a full finger of the olive green onto the index finger and I figured I would just apply that and then add a little bit of crystals at the end. So I'm using a medium sized bead of acrylic and applying that in the middle section, blending it down towards the tip and then adding another one right above it. You don't need to use a lot of pressure when blending out not polished powders. It's so easy to work with, definitely recommend it. So all you have to do is take your brush and just gently guide it where you want it to go. And then if you have little areas where you want the powder to stay, just pat it into place and gently drag the excess wherever you want that placed. When working with the cuticle area, always hold your finger in a downward position, place the bead near the cuticle and gently push that product up. And then while still holding the finger in a downward position, guide that product down into the tip. Now I'm going to be encapsulating these nails. You absolutely do not want to skip this step if you are working with glitter and ombre in my opinion. It just helps protect that so when you go into file you don't ruin any of it. So I like to do it regardless with what design or what I'm doing just because it adds that extra thickness as I do like to work with thinner layers of my colored acrylic just to save some product. So definitely think about encapsulating if you do not already.
Once everything is nice and dry, I am going to be starting my filing process. You can use your hand file if you are more comfortable with that. I prefer to use my e-file, especially on clients, as I feel it is a lot quicker. For today's video, I'm using the Kiara Sky rechargeable file. Definitely love that it is portable. Along with that, I'm using my 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky as well absolutely recommend this it's a safety bit you will not hurt yourself or your client obviously always take precautions when using and handling an e-file or any carbide bits however they are really smooth at the top making sure that the product is nice and flush to the natural nail as this will help with lifting and then I'm going gently across the entire surface of the nail vertically up and down just making sure there aren't any harsh ridges or bumps and making sure everything is nice and smooth if you do have problems e-filing or you are struggling in that area definitely check out my how to e-file video i break it all the way down for you guys and i hope it helps you guys if you guys do watch that Once I'm done with my e-file, I am going in with my peel and stick file once again and filing the sides, making sure that the shape is down right. I've mentioned it many, many times before. If you are an OG, you are probably sick of me saying it, but these files are so good and it is really important to have a good file for the perfect shaping. And I also have a video on that. I show you exactly how I achieve every shape from scratch. I know for most of my videos, I use pre-shaped tips and I like to keep them pretty coffin for the most part but I also like to show you guys how I do all my other shapes so make sure you guys go check that out I'll never get tired of saying this but turn the hand around to make sure you look at the nails from the client's perspective this helps tremendously to see any flaws that you might not catch but they can catch it helps looking at them from a different angle so I'm turning the hand around and then I'm filing the nails into shape making sure that it is nice and squared and at this point I will examine the whole nail to just to make sure that everything is nice and straight Now I'm cleansing the surface of the nail with my lint-free wipe and some swipe. Both are linked in my Amazon storefront. Just making sure that all the dust is removed and it's nice and prepared for our nail art. So for the middle finger, I decided to do a really popular floral design, I guess you could call it. I'm taking some jewelry gel and applying that on the side of the nail as you can see. I'm just using a dotting tool for this step. And then I'm taking these little crumbs of like broken metal pieces. I'll try to find where I got them so you guys can check them out if you are interested. But they're basically little shards of metal and they're not sharp at all whatsoever. So I'm just making sure that I'm packing that into that jewelry gel and then I'm wiping off any excess around because I do want that surface to be nice and flat so it doesn't mess up my little petals that I'm going to be creating. Pop that in the light for at least 30 seconds and now I am moving on to the little floral design. I'm using extra white or pure white from Kiara Sky along with my 3D brush which is linked in my Amazon storefront and I'm starting to create these petals. So as you can see I took a good sized bead of acrylic with this tiny brush, placed it in the position where I wanted to build my petal and then I start molding it how I want to mold it. I am extremely grateful for this specific white because it gives you time to mold it out 
and it doesn't dry super fast. It's really, really easy to work with. You don't have that terrible texture you typically get with white, so definitely recommend it. I'm just pushing up the sides just lightly. So I'm placing that bead again where I want it to be placed and I'm taking the tip of my brush kind of flattening that out just a little bit and then I'm putting pretty good amount of pressure in that middle section and just basically bulging out the sides and then directly in the center pulling out that product to create that petal and then again I'm just flattening out the sides just to give it a little bit more thickness and then you could clean up as you need to clean up as you can see I'm just making sure I'm cleaning it up as it helps it point it out just a little bit more pretty pretty simple definitely love creating these petals once you get them down right it's super easy to create and I'm just pushing up the sides just a little bit to give it a little bit more texture and to give that illusion of a leaf so now I'm starting in the middle of both of those and I'm going to be doing a rounded petal. Same concept, you apply the bead, press down in the center, except for these, you're not going to pull any product out. All I'm doing is basically making sure that that center is nice and thin and then the outer area of the petal is nice and thick. So I'm just cleaning that up just a little bit because it does run. And then another one right there and the same concept taking my brush placing it where I want to and then I start molding that out but that's basically it and that's how you achieve these really pretty flower petals so now I'm taking some more of that jewelry gel and applying that around the cuticle of my index finger I'm taking these really pretty gold crystals that I have no idea where I purchased from and just applying them around the cuticle gold is really in for fall and it goes really well with the brown burgundy green and all that so I wanted to stick with that color now I am going ahead and top coating I did do shiny which is gloss it from not polish onto the pinky nail and then of course because I can't stay away from it I'm using matte it from not polish on the rest of the nails you can absolutely switch them up. You could do shiny on half of them. Just for me personally, I wanted to keep them matte. I do like to recommend what design to do on the thumb. I probably would do either another glitter nail or another ombre nail if I was doing this on a client. And always remember to cure that in the light. I did take some glosset and place that over top of those little metal shards just to make sure that those stay shiny and it also helps kind of encapsulate them onto the nail. That basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. This is for my day one.